What is good, my dudes? So, today, got a video talking about changing a cooler on a graphics card. That's right. So, a while back, I picked up a 1080 Ti off of Craigslist for a great deal. Um, came with the Founders Edition cooler. Founders Edition cooler, not horrible, not great. With that in mind, um, the noise is pretty loud, even though it does keep the card pretty cool, especially in the case that I'm using. Um, that said, I wanted a little bit lower noise, so I started looking around at different options, and I eventually settled on the Arctic Accelero uh, Extreme 3, not the fourth, and we'll get to that. But, uh, got through swapping this cooler, just wanted to talk about the process, a little bit about the cooler, a little bit about other options, and uh, my performance experience with it. So, with that in mind, we'll jump right into it. Uh, sorry about the mess. I'm an animal. Uh, <laughs> That said, we'll have some footage going in the background of uh, a little bit of me installing it, and then I've got a couple of pictures that we can put in there, maybe throw some effects on it. So, reasons why I got the cooler. Well, uh, to start with, the, the noise on the Founders Edition cards it is not great. Uh, the performance is there if you really ramp those fans up, but then the noise just cranks up and it's just, it's just not good. So, I started looking around at different options, and so I actually use other uh, PCIe devices other than a graphics card, so I couldn't go with other larger versions. Uh, specifically, I think it's Ragentech makes one, the Ragentech Morpheus 2, which uh, you can put massive fans on their actual 120 millimeter uh, case fans, like you would, you know, just for normal airflow. And I think the performance is great. It's even better than the uh, AX, uh, the, the ACX3, but it takes up four fucking slots, and that just wasn't going to happen in my case. Um, I, I need those lanes, I need those slots available. And so, with that in mind, uh, I had two options. I had the uh, Arctic ACX3, and I also had the um, the NZXT Corsair AIO options. So in my case, I actually only have one 120 mount. It's the uh, Silverstone FT05, and that case is fantastic for air cooling. So I thought it would be a real shame to go ahead and throw a water cooler on there. Beyond that, it would screw up the airflow for my CPU, and total system uh, airflow and all that would probably just be trashed. So the other thing too is I'm not very keen on AIO cooling. I think if you're going to do water, do it right, go custom. There's just, uh, you, you get an added point of failure. The performance is only a few degrees over air. And frankly, I don't really think it's worth the hassle. Beyond that, you'll start to look at the price. Uh, basic 120 millimeter AIO, you're looking at about 50, 60 bucks, maybe even up to 80. And then you've got to get the adapter bracket, unless you're going to do like the old school zip tie mod. You know, so we'll just, we'll just go with the zip tie mod. So you're looking at 50 bucks for the AIO, Right? And then, you know, what? You know, we'll just say you had the zip ties. And then, you've also got to get uh, a bunch of those tiny little copper or aluminum heat sinks for your VRMs, maybe for your RAM. And so, now you're looking at maybe, you know, 15, 30 bucks in those stupid little coolers, those stupid little heat sinks you have to get. And then you've also got to get thermal adhesive or thermal pads, so let's stick on another 20 bucks. And then, anything else you might need, you know, we'll just give it a, a cushion $10, right? So you're up to about $110 to cool this graphics card. Uh, the <laughs> I managed to pick up the Arctic Cooler for about $50 on Amazon. Prime shipping to my door in two days. So that's actually really hard to beat, guys. And the performance, as you guys will see, this, this thing kicks ass. So, now that you know why I got the cooler, um, let, let, let's talk about the cooler a little bit. So, uh, looking at it, it's, it's a pretty big cooler. It's about the same size as you'd expect from similar three fan designs. Uh, about the same length or size as like a Sapphire Tri-X or a... MSI, um, tri frozer, something in that range. It's, it's your standard three fan cooler. What's not standard about it is that it is a three slot uh, design. And so that is something that's becoming more popular now. You see that on like the, uh, the ROG Strix and I think the uh, 1080 Ti, and you see that on the, um, what is it, the Zotac Amp, I believe is a three, three slot cooler. And the MSI Lightning has always been, or at the least recently, has been a three slot design. And so it, it's not as unusual as it used to be, but it is still kind of new to me. It's the first three slot cooler that I've really dealt with in in any sort of uh, length. And so it's pretty big. Um, as for length, it's not the longest cooler, but it's definitely not the shortest, and it actually just barely fits into my case. I had to kind of finagle it in there. So with that in mind, um, do definitely try to do your best and check and see if it will work in your case if you do decide to go with this cooler. 
Um, another really, really nice thing, and actually the reason that I went with the Arctic um, ACX3 over the 4 is the inclusion of those smaller heat sinks. So those smaller heat sinks that you, you get to stick with it, and we, we've got some footage somewhere here in the, in the time lapse. Um, there's all sorts of different shapes and sizes, and those are intended to go on your RAM, your VRM, anything that might get hot on the card that needs cooling. And so the inclusion of those, they're not you know, super awesome copper ones, they're just aluminum basic ones, but they still do the job very well. There's various shapes and sizes, different uh, lengths, different heights, and, and it'll definitely adapt to just about any card on the market. And if not, you can always take the Dremel to it, z -z -z -z, solve that problem. So the, the difference is that the Arctic um, uh, ACX4 uses the same uh, main cooler for like the GPU uh, core. Now, it doesn't include any of those little heat sinks. It actually uses a uh, back plate, uh, which one, adds an extra slot to the card, making it a four slot card, which does not work in my case. And two, um, it just wants you to assume that your, your circuitry component, your electrical components are going to be cooled passively through the PCB, and then that heat will transfer to the back plate, which has fins, and then it will cool it. And there's, uh, there's a couple of reviews out there, I'll see if I can find one post in the link, that show that VRM temperatures suffer greatly. And to that end, um, once VRM temperatures go up, efficiency drops, you get more ripple, it, overclocking is limited, you start to be limited by temperatures, the lifespan of your components drops, it's just overall not a good thing. So, uh, talking about installation on this thing. Installation on this, actually pretty easy. The hardest damn part of putting this cooler on was actually taking the Founders Edition, uh, the, the reference blower style cooler off there. And that's because NVIDIA uses these tiny ass little screws. You actually need a very, very small uh, socket to get at them, or you can go absolute madman. You can you can take some pliers, some needle nose, get in there, but you're gonna really risk you know knocking off a trace or knocking off some kind of circuitry. And you know I I'm I'm no rocket scientist. I don't know, but that that doesn't seem like a good thing. And who knows? You could you know potentially ruin a $700 graphics card just out the window. So with that in mind, just buy the $5 fucking set of sockets. I got I got this little thing. Um, came with the socket size I needed at Walmart, like four bucks, fifty cents, something like that. Um, the size of socket that I used and I did note works is uh, five thirty seconds. So really strange type. I kind of expected it to be metric. And online doing a little bit of search shows that a three millimeter socket may work, um, or four millimeter if you put some tape in there uh, seems to work for others. So once we get everything pulled apart, once we get everything taken apart, uh, put you know. Got, got down to the PCB, everything was pretty easy. Um, I went ahead and I laid out my heat sinks in a, in a little bit of a uh, like diagram in front of the car and so I could envision where they were going to go. And then I just used a little bit of the occluded thermal adhesive, stuck them all on there. Uh, everything got installed nice, everything covered up really well. There were still even leftover heat sinks, I still have some left over. Um, RAM got pretty close, uh, 11 gigabytes of RAM was not a thing when this card was designed and there are a lot of modules on the um, on the 1080 Ti, and so we we got pretty close, but I think there's still one or two, and the goddamn second battery died. But this one, it's got like 86 percent, so I, I hope to fucking god we can get through the rest of the video. Now, I was talking about heat sinks. There's plenty of heat sinks. There's plenty of different sizes. There's plenty of different shapes. It's gonna fit on almost any graphics card, if not any graphics card. So uh, the only exception. Um, is that this cooler, I'll just go ahead and put it out here right now. Anything that has HBM, this cooler won't work. Um, there's issues with uh, Vega, I know, specifically, with certain dies have different heights, very, very slightly different heights for the HBM as well as the core, so that's a problem. The other thing is that uh, putting pressure on that, um, you, you kind of just need a, a custom cold plate for that. So just, I mean, I guess you could try it. If somebody tries it, please, please let me know because I, I've really wanted to try it. And, you know, maybe I can get my hands on it on an old Fiji card, we can try that. But that's that's for another day. And so for RAM, um, there were almost not enough heat sinks. Um, I think I've got one or two left over for the 1080 Ti. Now it does have uh, a lot of RAM modules on there. I think more than most GPUs, or maybe they're just higher density because of the GDD, uh, RX, uh, but eh, you know, whatever. Um, there, there were enough. And so uh, all those, just put a little bit of the thermal adhesive on, stick them on there, put a little bit of pressure on for 10, 20 seconds, and then uh, once I got everything on there, I just set a book on top of it, left it there for about 30 minutes, maybe an hour or so, then it came back. So actually installing the cooler itself, um, just check the, um, just go ahead and check the uh, manual and just check for your specific type of card. Just check what you need to do and what kind of spaces you need. 
because there are different spacers and the important thing to watch here is you don't want to put too much tension on it. If you notice the PCB bending, then loosen it up a bit, but you do want a lot of tension. And then other than that, just make sure you have those right spacers on there and you should be good to rock and roll. Uh, mounts just like pretty much any aftermarket CPU cooler, just on a different shape PCB and not a motherboard. So other than that, uh, after I got that done, that was pretty quick and easy. Actually installing the uh, the VRM heat sinks, the RAM heat sinks, and the actual uh, GPU heat sink itself was uh, it took probably about half the time that taking the, the damn Founders Edition cooler off did. So boo on Nvidia, but yay for Arctic. Uh, they got it. They got it right here. All right, so we're gonna take a break from me talking about the this this cooler and, and this card, and I'm gonna show you because we should be finishing up right about here in the video. We're gonna have a little bit of B-roll, so enjoy. into the, the final segment for this video. So performance for the card now is fantastic. I've been blown away, been incredibly impressed. So at stock, just to do a comparison, I uh, wasn't quite sure how to compare uh, because I can't measure noise levels so I can't get that relative performance. So I said, you know what, we'll just lock them both at 50% and see where they stand. And so with the uh, Founders Edition cooler on there, 50% fans locked and uh, just stock speed, stock power, uh, you know, stock stock power configuration, everything just stuck, just how it came out of the box. Um, I ran the uh, fire strike stress test and got about uh, 84 degrees, which is the thermal limit, and then it started throttling that speed back. We actually got all the way down to the base clock, and we're still sitting in like 80, 83, 84 degrees on the card, so real hot, uh, struggling to keep up at that fan speed. I'm happy to report with the Arctic cooler, um, same 50% fan speed, same test, same settings. Uh, did not break 60. Um, it touch up to 60, it was bounced between 60 and 59, but that whole time was actually really great performance, um, and it was far, far quieter, much, much quieter. I, I went from being able to hear the the reference cooler to or the Founders Edition cooler um, to not being able to hear it at all. And even when you crank the fans up all the way, I'm, I'm having a difficult time hearing it. Now that said, we've also got an AC going 24/7 over there, and I've got my mining rig over there, so take that with a grain of salt. I've not tested this in a super quiet environment, but I've been pretty impressed with the performance. So um, with a typical gaming load, I'm running the card at 120% power um, power limit. I've got no extra voltage in there. Got the clock speed boosted by 150 on the core and 400 on the memory. And so with those settings, I'm, I've never really seen temperatures during gaming go past 65C, um, and I've never really seen uh, the fans go past 42, 45%. Um, now bear in mind, this is also a 4K. Uh, I'm driving a 4K display, so the graphics card is really getting hammered. We're loading the bus, we're loading the memory. Um, I've seen, I was playing Shadow of Mordor the other day, and we got up to almost 10 gigabytes of VRAM usage, so we're, we're really hitting the whole part of the card here. So this is a really good sync on the card, and it's performing excellent. Uh, I, I've been blown away by this corner for $50. It's, it's a hell of a deal. So uh, my, my opinion on this, uh, it's great. Pick it up. Um, if you're, you know, if you don't want to deal with water cooling, you don't want to deal with uh, a hassle on it. Uh, it's real easy to install. And another thing that I really want to talk about here is those adapters from NZXT and Corsair. They will work for certain cards now, and I assume certain cards later. But they're a lot more limited in their scope. It just, just take a look, and I'll include a link in the description. Just go ahead and look at the the Arctic homepage for the, a, um, the ACX3. There are so many graphics cards that this is supported on. And this was released back in 2012. And so if you had bought this in 2012, you would have had a top-of-the-line cooling solution for a 7970 or a 680, a 290X or a 780 Ti, a 980 Ti, or, well, I guess not the Fury X. Uh, well, I guess the 980 before the 980 Ti, or the 980 Ti. And then now you have a top-notch cooling solution for 480, 580 if you want, if you really want to, you really don't need it on those cards. 1080, 1080 Ti, and the other thing to note is this works with all of the uh, all of the Titans because um, they use a similar mounting uh, solution. And so, realistically, any card that doesn't use HBM for the last five years, this this has been compatible with. And so, if you had invested that money 
five years ago, you would have been able to get any card you wanted. Even even one of those god awful <laughs> reference 290Xs. Slap this on there and instantly be rocking and rolling a month, six weeks, however long it takes the, uh, the AIVs to get their, their models out, the aftermarket coolers out, and, and, and you would have been fine. You would have been fine. And there's enough thermal adhesive in there that I'd say you can probably get three or four installs out of it. And so I'm just blown away by the value on this. This is a great value. It's got great performance. It's got great noise levels. And I, two thumbs up. This has been an excellent product, and I hope you guys enjoyed. So thanks for watching the video. Subscribe, like, tell your friends, tell your girlfriend, tell your wife, tell your kids. I, I don't care. Just, just tell somebody. That'd be nice. So until next time, take it easy.